Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome to my kitchen. This is C Mini Mom, and this is going to be another Use It Up Challenge. This is where I make meals for my family using just things that we already have on hand in the pantry, fridge, and freezer for the most part. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, I've done several of these kinds of videos and they tend to be pretty popular. This is where I try to get creative. I try to delay going to the grocery store and just make meals for my family with what we have on hand. And sometimes delaying spending money is saving money because if I can cut out one grocery trip a month or one grocery trip every other month, then that's you know less opportunity for me to impulse buy or to overbuy and have things go to waste. We also try to be good stewards of the things that we have. So I wanna make sure that I'm using up things like produce and dairy products and meat products that would otherwise go to waste. Now, most of the time when I do these challenges, I don't go to the store. I just try to use what I have on hand. This time as I was looking around my kitchen and kind of trying to plan out what I might make with the things that I already have, I just thought, gosh, this would be so much easier if I just had fill in the blank. And it was like four or five items. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and run to the store and get those items. Because for me, actually walking into the grocery store and only buying five items is much harder for me than not going to the grocery store at all. Because as I'm walking through, I'm saying like, oh, that's a great price on grapes. Or I should check out the bakery clearance rack or something like that. I know a lot of people in January have a no spend or a low spend January. So sometimes doing a pantry challenge means purchasing just a few items so that you can use up the stuff that you have on hand, it still is a savings in the long run. So it's just another way to think about meal planning, planning your meals around what you have already and then just buying the bare minimum to make them work. So let's jump into this week and I'll show you what I made for my family. So I actually started this challenge with a really easy sheet pan dinner that used up some stuff I had hanging out in my fridge and my freezer. I had some turkey smoked sausage, a can of biscuits, a package of frozen green beans, and then I had like three potatoes that came in my imperfect box. So I actually threw the potatoes and green beans onto the sheet pan with just a little olive oil and some seasonings. I baked those for about 10 minutes at 350. Then I added the cut up turkey smoked sausage and baked it for another 10 minutes and the biscuits I just made according to the package directions. It was a super, super easy sheet pan meal for the first night of this challenge. The next morning, I did get some pictures of my pantry, fridge, and freezer. I always like to show you kind of what it looks like before so I can give you an after picture and let you see how much we used up and also let you know that I'm not working with a whole lot here. I mean, you can see that I don't have like a fully stocked pantry or a freezer and fridge to be sure. I mean, it looks pretty bare, but I'm still gonna be able to come up with some meals. I also have just a hand full of items in my chest freezer out in the garage but really just some frozen vegetables and I think a package of turkey smoked sausage that you'll see here but just some you know random items that I'm trying to use up and these are the four items that I purchased at the grocery store to make this meal plan work some cheese some celery some Greek yogurt and some chicken breast on this night, I made a sausage and orzo soup using the crock pot and it turned out wonderful. And actually this recipe comes from my friend Carrie whose primary website is eatingonadime.com. She has a very successful website and she has a Facebook page I think with over or almost 3 million followers. Carrie and I go way back. We were both foster and adoptive parents about 10 years ago and Carrie actually has eight children that she is feeding every night so she knows about getting meals on the table and she and her sister recently kicked off the lazy day cooking club which is a service she provides where she and her sister drop 20 new recipes every single month that are not only crock pot or instant pot friendly but they can be made ahead of time I'm actually going to be filming an entire video dedicated to her service so you're going to be hearing more about that but in case you want to check it out early I will leave a link in the description box below so to get this recipe started which is from the lazy day cooking club I am just sauteing some onions, some celery, and some carrots, and a little bit of olive oil. And then I'm going to add half a pound of turkey um, sausage that I decided to just cut the meat in half because we typically use um, less meat if we can. And I wanna use the other half pound for another recipe later on in the week. So I am just browning that in the pot right there with the vegetables after I give them a little bit of a head start. And once that is cooked completely through, I will drop it into the crock pot. By the way, if you want that little meat chopper separator tool, I usually leave it linked in the description box below. It is from Amazon. So after I add that stuff to the crock pot, I'm gonna add just a few cloves of minced garlic, some Italian seasoning, 
some diced tomatoes, a can of diced tomatoes, and also just some fresh cracked black pepper. I'm also going to throw in a Parmesan rind that I've had in the refrigerator for a little while. You know you get the wedges of Parmesan and the end of it is very hard and you can't really shred it. Well it makes for a really great flavoring for soups and I just throw it into the soup while it's cooking. It adds flavor to it and then I take it out when it's done cooking. It's just a great way to use those if you have those from Parmesan rinds. And because I don't purchase broth anymore, usually I don't anyway, I'm just using a little bit of broth base and then I'm adding six cups of water. I turned my crock pot to high and then walked away and got busy doing other stuff. And I'll come back to it um, in just a minute and show you how I finished that out. I've had this bag of Rhodes frozen rolls in my freezer for a while. It was actually about half a bag. So I took them out and let them thaw and they rose a little bit. And I wanted to turn them into like some kind of garlic pull apart bread. So I went ahead and just took the kitchen shears and cut these into small pieces. I think I got two or three pieces out of each roll. And then I dropped them into the bump pan and I poured half a stick of melted butter over the top. And I also had sprinkled a little bit of garlic salt into the butter. and then I also added just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top. I just sprinkled just the grated Parmesan cheese from the refrigerator and um, I covered these with a towel and then put them in the oven to proof for a little while. I wasn't sure if they were going to proof up high enough but boy was I surprised whenever I took them out of the oven from proofing about an hour later and they were definitely um, <laughs> risen for sure and they rose up nice and fluffy so I put them into the oven at 350 and I let them bake until they were done they came out just a little bit burned on the top which you'll see in just a minute but really they were they were delicious so I'll report back to you here whenever you see the kids eating those in just a second after my soup had been cooking for about two and a half hours, I added one cup of orzo. I do use whole wheat orzo when I can. I find mine at Sprouts, but regular orzo would work just fine. I left that on high and let it cook for an additional 30 to 45 minutes. It takes whole wheat orzo a little bit longer than regular orzo, but you can see it right here. So I just spooned that out into four little bowls because my husband wasn't here that night. He came home and had his later and said it was really, really good. In fact, he's eating the leftovers today as I am um, recording this but I just added some freshly grated Parmesan some freshly shredded Parmesan right there and then here's a picture of the bread finished as you can see like I said it's a tiny bit overbaked on the top so I was worried but the munchkins ate this up they absolutely loved it they could not get enough of it they loved dipping it in their soup there was a little bit left over for the next day and they came home from school and had it as a snack so this meal was a definite win and again be sure to look for that video about the lazy day cooking club dropping soon Good morning, everybody. It's morning here, and I was up in Adam early, and I decided to throw something in the oven for breakfast for everybody. I've had these blueberries hanging out in my freezer for a few months now. They really needed to get used. So I saw an interesting recipe on Pinterest for something called a blueberry buckle, and I'd never heard of that. And it's basically kind of a dense sort of blueberry cake with like a crumb topping. It was pretty basic, like pantry staple ingredients, you know, flour, sugar, milk. I did use a little bit of half and half watered down for the milk because we're starting to run low on milk and I didn't want to like use all that up. But it turned out fantastic. It is so good. I actually sent some um, with my daughter in her school lunch. She was packing lunch this morning, so she took a piece with her. My husband took some to work because he's having lunch with some friends. McKenna's back here behind me eating it up. <laughs> and um, Brick is just coming downstairs to have his. I will leave that recipe linked in the description box below. It is from a website called afamilyfeast.com. So if you've got some blueberries and you have just regular like baking staples, um, you can make this. It was absolutely delicious. I'm just taking a break from housework for a little lunch. And this is my lunch today. I actually did a whole separate video about this lunch prep. I made five of them. My husband took three of them to work today, one for himself and and two for friends that he was having a lunch meeting with and they all said it was fabulous and it's really really good it is a cilantro lime rice with black beans and corn some salsa chicken and a homemade pico and then some homemade chewy's jalapeno dip which i make a little bit healthier by making it with greek yogurt so if you're interested in seeing how i made this then you can watch that video i will leave a link in the description box below he also took some of the blueberry buckle to work and he said everybody loved it. He had a leadership meeting this morning and everybody had a small piece because I sent about half of it with him. I had a piece of it for breakfast. It was fabulous. So definitely go and make that recipe and go check out this one.
Tonight I am making sort of a tried and true favorite and one of those dishes that I almost always have the ingredients for on hand. The original recipe is called Old Fashioned Goulash. I will leave it linked in the description box below. I grew up calling this Chili Mac and I think some people even call it Johnny Marzetti. Is that what it's called? But anyhow, it's a really simple pasta dish. I am of course making some adjustments based on what I have. So in my pot, I already browned some onion, about half of an onion, a few cloves of garlic, and half a pound of Italian turkey sausage. I used the other half in the soup that I made in the crock pot the other night, so I had a half a pound left. So I'm only using half a pound of meat, which is fine. We're fine cutting back on the meat. Once that was cooked, I added half a tablespoon of Italian seasoning, a teaspoon of seasoned salt, one bay leaf, a can of tomato paste, just a small can plus two cans of water and now I am adding some petite diced tomatoes just one can and then I am adding two cups or eight ounces of whole wheat pasta and three and a half cups of water I'm gonna bring that to a boil and then I'm going to cover it reduce the heat and just watch it as usual when I'm working with whole wheat pasta I feel like sometimes I have to add more water just make sure that it's not burning um, and it should take about 15 minutes or so to cook completely and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done and how I am serving that I forgot I also added some black pepper so you can kind of see it on top there I always just have like a pepper grinder and I use fresh black pepper so I added some of that and I wanted to mention too that I reduced the salt in this that the recipe calls for because I used sausage and instead of just plain ground beef or ground turkey because ground sausage is already seasoned. And so um, I didn't wanna go overboard with the salt because I can always add more salt later, but I can't take it out. And here is dinner tonight. I just made some steam in the bag broccoli to go alongside this. Actually, my husband made this because I was at baseball practice with Brick, so he and I are eating late. And normally I would do mozzarella cheese on this, but we didn't have any, we just have cheddar, so it'll do just fine, but that's dinner tonight. Tonight for dinner, I am making a chicken and orzo soup. So I will leave the recipe linked in the description box below. <laughs> you talking? And um, I'm basically following the recipe, maybe with just a few minor adjustments. So in my pan right here, I have onions, carrots, celery, and garlic that I have sauteed in olive oil and a little bit of butter. And I added two tablespoons of flour and I just kind of whisked that around so that the flour would dissolve a little bit. I'm going to add four cups of water now to this. And then I'm going to put two of my frozen chicken breasts in here along with, um, I'll probably be generous. I'll probably do a couple of teaspoons of um, Italian seasoning, some salt and pepper, and a little bit of broth base. I'm gonna bring that to a boil until my chicken is cooked. And then I'm going to um, take my chicken out, shred it up, put it back in, add my orzo, probably about a cup of orzo. And then I'll probably finish it off with maybe a splash of half and half, which I have. And we'll just kind of see where we are at that point. I'm also gonna make some grilled cheese sandwiches to go along with that. So I'll show you what I'm doing uh, whenever I get to that point. I am going to make some grilled cheese sandwiches to go along with this. I have about half of a one pound block. So uh, it's probably a little bit less than eight ounces of cheddar cheese. I'm gonna shred that. And I bought this bread um, last month on an Ibotta rebate and it's been in the freezer. And I think I even mentioned when I purchased it that it would make really great grilled cheese sandwiches. And I actually assemble my grilled cheese sandwiches on the griddle. I will just put a, some butter like right on the griddle, put a piece of bread on top of that, put some shredded cheese on, um, put the other piece of bread on top, put some more butter on the griddle, flip it over. But my secret ingredient for my grilled cheese sandwiches is this right here. It is whipped cream cheese. I put a little of this on the inside of the sandwiches. It kind of helps it stick together while it cooks, while the cheese is melting. It also just lends, you know, more cheesiness to the grilled cheese sandwich. So I wish I had like a little bit of turkey or something because I really like a grilled turkey and cheese sandwich. But that's how I am making these grilled cheese sandwiches. And I think this bread will be absolutely fabulous for grilled cheese sandwiches. So that's what we're having tonight. And I'll show you what it looks like when it is all plated up. My orzo is done cooking and I'm straying from the recipe a little bit here. I'm gonna add a little bit of half and half because again, I have it in the fridge, I'm trying to use it up. Probably about a half a cup or so, and just the little bit of fat that I'm putting into this is gonna add a lot of flavor. I am going to add the shredded chicken back in. I'm going to turn it completely off. I'm just gonna turn it off, put the lid on it, and then it's gonna be ready whenever we're ready to eat it. And here is dinner tonight. Grilled cheese off the griddle, 
And then the soup, I did have to add just a little bit of water to the soup whenever I took the lid off. It had thickened up quite a lot. So hindsight is 20-20, but I would probably just leave the flour out of it next time because I don't really think it needs it the way that I made it for thickening. But of course, it's up to you. But that's dinner tonight. Yummy. It is a pretty chilly Saturday, so I'm gonna get some soup going in the crock pot that we can have maybe for a late lunch this afternoon. This is what is left of my chicken breast. I think there's two little chicken breasts in there, so I'm gonna throw those in there with some corn. With these Southern Style O'Brien hash browns, the great thing about this kind of hash browns is that the onions and the peppers are already in there, so it helps season whatever you are using it in. I have an open package of cream cheese here, so I'm going to use it, and it's probably about two-thirds of the package or so, maybe three-quarters of the package. And I am out of broth base, so I'm actually going to try seasoning it with this. My sister sent this home with me. It's Trader Joe's everything, but the, is it Elite? Is that how you say that? Seasoning. So I'm going to put maybe a tablespoon of that in there and just some salt and pepper with you know three or four cups of water. I'm gonna cook it on high, come back and shred the chicken up, and then I still have some half and half I'm trying to use up, so I might put just a splash of that in there, and we'll just see where we are. I'm just sort of throwing this together and hoping that it comes out yummy, we'll see. You guys, this soup turned out fantastic. What a happy accident. I ended up not putting any half and half in it because it was plenty creamy with just the third less fat cream cheese that I used. I even made up a little white rice to throw in mine to kind of stretch it a little bit so we would have leftovers for lunch tomorrow. And I added just a little bit of salt and pepper to my bowl. And I did have just a little bit of my cheese left. I have this much of my block of cheese left, so I shredded a little bit of it to put in there as well. But this is so, so good. And and it really hits the spot because I just got back from a run. So I jumped in the shower and now I'm having this uh, for lunch and it is absolutely delicious. So I love it whenever I accidentally stumble upon a really delicious soup recipe. Yay. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out because I am trying to get this edited and uploaded so you guys can actually see it tomorrow. In fact, I already have my blue light glasses on here as I am sitting at the computer editing this video. I hope this gives you some ideas. Obviously, I didn't show you every single thing that we ate this week. You know, we were trying to eat up produce. We were trying to use up fruit. The kids were making, you know, breakfast items and lunch items and stuff. But hopefully this gave you some ideas and just some inspiration because I realize when you do pantry cooking, you're not gonna have the exact same things that I have but I hope that it is just encouraging you to really think outside the box and maybe get creative with your meals so that you can use the things that you have on hand, even if it means going to the store to grab just a couple of ingredients to make that easier like I did this week. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you are interested in Lazy Day Cooking Club, be sure to check out the link in the description box below, and I will be shooting a video entirely about Lazy Day Cooking Club, a meal prep video that will be coming out next week, so be sure to look for that. All right, you guys, I'll check in with another video very soon.